Hey guys, Midget here, bringing you another episode of my Derby career mode. Here we go straight into the game against West Bromwich Albion, and their team is so much changed due to Pepe Mel. I didn't know where to start my, you know, strategies off because I, obviously I didn't do my homework, you know, uh, football-wise. You know, they have players like Borek Yilmaz who are an absolute gods, but in the ninth minute they start attacking me. Uh, when Claudio Jakob finds Ricardo, something I don't know his name, who finds Claudio Jakob once again, you know, classical one-two, and he slots it past Butland, so we're one nil down and in 32nd minute we have our first you know shot of the game when Bolly beats his man for pace and skies the shot you know I think he was a bit frustrated um, you know being the captain he's got the whole weight of the team on his hands um, but in the 45th minute plus one minute you know Danny gets injured you know he gets a dislocated shoulder and uh, you know because of a aerial challenge he did with someone in the box I don't know I think it was Dede um, but we swap him for uh, Johnny Russell there's no no mistake Johnny Russell's better than him so I guess you know it, it only brings good things for us but you see in the half time stats that the first half was absolutely appalling you know the one shot on target they had went in so you know but that's football in the 71st minute you know we were lucky not to go 2-0 down through Chris Brunt you know the Irishman just fired a bit wide because you know obviously he was a bit off balance but in the 75th minute Bolly put in a great cross for Johnny Russell and he wasted the opportunity and you know I think you know you can see how frustrated he was there um but going into the dying you know minutes of you know the match uh, Johnny Russell couldn't finish his dinner but Bryson could uh, pick up the pieces and score you know in this season like Bryson is becoming such a great player I was thinking of selling him um, but now I'm thinking of selling Ward because um, a guy called Rory Cooper told me that he retires at the age of 29 and he's already decreasing so I think he might be true uh, it might be true but in the 70 uh, sorry 84th minute Johnny Russell uh, almost chips Ben Foster but he gets into a scuffle and you know Martin finds a loophole in the defence and scores you know um, so puts us in lead you know it wasn't exactly um, that hard of a chance to defend but I think it was the fact that their man hand bowled it so it could have been a I bet it would have been actually a penalty if Johnny Russell or sorry uh, Chris Martin didn't get there but obviously the two front men at Derby in real life right now um, score for me in game which is absolutely amazing but we have a chance to accept Mason Jones uh, right mid, you know, back up right mid. And we also decide to b do do accept him, basically, because I don't have the money for um, Osblis or Redmond, you know, which I'm not going to look into signing anymore. Maybe Osblis, but not Redmond, I don't think. Uh, but here I quickly go down to the dying minute. Well, no, not dying minutes. Last hour of the transfer window and show you everybody's, um, you know, signings and deals, I guess. The top deals were, you know, Arturo Vidal to Manchester City, Christian Benteke to Bayern Munich, and Juan Jesus to Manchester City again, which I don't see the point in happening because they've already got company, but I guess it is the fourth season, so, you know, uh, whatever. But, you know, I really want to sign these four players I've got in that, in that you know, box there. But, you know, for, we have to wait, you know, because I'm going to sign them on pre-contracts, I think. Or at least I'd want to sign them. But we go into the simulator game against Norwich, you know, and being Derby County, I didn't fear, you know, I didn't think we were going to win this game. But, you know, worth a try, you know, I don't really care about Capital One Cup. And we do lose, you know, so I was pretty angry. But we go into the European qualifiers, which I don't show you the highlights for because... Basically, I think, you know, they're boring, but I show you the table, so from 5th place that Poland were when I started managing them, I made them go up to 2nd, which is absolutely amazing, and we're in the World Cup, so I'm really happy for Poland, you know, um... You know, it'll be a nice little mini series, the World Cup, I guess, for Poland. You know, I'm not planning on winning it, but obviously, you know, it'll be nice just being in there. You know, I guess. Um, but here we go into the game against. I don't even know who we're playing. QPR, I think it is. Yeah, and obviously, have the they have my old boy Paul Cuts that was a decent player. You know, but in the first minute, Ward made an absolute great pass to redeem himself from having poor performances, and you know, Martin just dinked the dinked Julio Cesar, I believe it is, in goal, um, you know, like, it was nothing, you know, it, it was such a simple finish from him, you know, he fake shots, just takes one touch, and, you know, puts us in lead within two minutes, but in the 
ninth minute, the same thing could have happened, but he decided to shoot it. Uh, but Julio Cesar managed to perfectly keep it out, and Van der Ver's follow up couldn't do anything um, to annoy the Brazilian keeper. But in the 16th minute, you know, we went through once again, but Marty got denied by the post. You know, so all these chances to go and begging will they somehow, you know, um, come back at us and make us like, you know, uh, concede? You know, they did because Nathaniel Klein was an absolute mong hole and Diakite hit the post, but I got so um, panic panicky, I guess, I decided to clear the ball into my own net by accident with Nathaniel Klein, it was just me, I'm not going to blame him, but I think, you know, if he had more shot power, that might have missed the goal, so, you know, screw you Klein, you know, but we decided to play in Russell just, just before the hour mark, and he, you know, simply finishes it past the Brazilian keeper again, you know. Johnny Russell is one of these players that you just get in one-on-one -on -one and he's going to score. He's never going to miss. Um, it used to be Danny Ings, but now it's Johnny Russell. All you need is a man with pace and good finishing, and that's what will happen, you know. That's how you score easy goals. But in the 67th minute, we decide to play in Bryson through Martin, you know, Martin. Because we're going on the counter, but Triori manages to just just block uh, Bryson's cross. But he doesn't block this cross from the corner that goes all the way through to Eric Deer to get his first header in this episode, you know. Eric Deer, you know, the English beast, he's just some 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 lanky guy that just sits there, defends amazingly, and he's got so good headers because he's so tall and strong that no one's going to beat him. And I love taking corners because it's basically penalties with him. But but in the 77th minute, you know, Klein didn't manage to dispossess Diakite and gets a premature cross eventually to Hoyler that gets expertly saved by Butland. Um, but in the 81st minute, you know, uh, QPR do the exact same strategy, but it manages to get parried by Butland, not saved, and, you know, some guy from QPR manages to follow up with a goal, you know. I don't exactly know who it was, I don't know who QPR's number 7 is, um, but it manages to get it back to, pull it back to 3-2. But we managed to hold on, so Derby County win, you know, the team that came up with us from the Championship, and I get another contract extension from Poland, which, you know, why should I not, not take it? Because I got Poland so far, why quit now, you know? May as well just take it, but i show you the guys that I would want to sign on pre-contract extensions now, I believe. I just look at Fenef and Baker, because I really think uh, Daniel Carrico is getting towards the end of his, you know, career at Derby County, because he's not progressing. Uh, Eric Deer is progressing, so he's safe. But these are all the players that I want. So Nathan Baker, Robbie Brady, Rio Miyachi, Aaron Doran, and Scott Wooden, Wooten, Wooten, Wooten. I don't even know his name, but, you know, we go into the first game of the Europa League against Rosenborg, and i got to tell you, this game was an absolute cracker, um, but, uh, you know, looking at the table now, you can see that I probably have the easiest tie, you know, apart from Legia, Legia, oh, I don't even want to pronounce it, I'll pronounce it next episode or whenever I have my next tie, you know, um, you know, but we, so we have potentially the easiest, you know, team to come up first, which I don't know if that's a good thing or that's a bad thing, uh, I just don't know, um, I, I didn't even know how to play against Rosenborg, because, what, you see, I, I absolutely hammered them, but they had every single man in their half, you know, look at that, there's like four players in their half, you know, that's, this is the start of the game, so don't be fooled, you know, that I, I this was it, like the whole game, you know, Johnny Russell manages to put a shot wide in the two minutes mark, um, but this is basically their best chance in the whole game, you know, they almost, you know, they almost beat Butland to it, but nothing really serious, but like, look at that, there's like nine players in there, I, I, I was forced to take an outside of the box shot with Martin, which got followed up by Russell, but it was an absolute horrendous shot, and it was easily saved by uh, Hansen, the you know the keeper, and amazing shot, amazing uh, save there from Hansen, but a woeful clearance and Junior Melander. I'll I'll tell you what, that is a one heck of a finish, and that's what we needed from our you know CDM. You know, just to brighten our spirits up for the second half, you know, with some, you know, individual genius, and that's what he did. You know, he gave us an absolute cracker, and, you know, you can see by these stats that we absolutely deserved the, you know, win, but we just couldn't get it because they were so, 
so annoying, stubborn. Look at everyone in that box, you know. Um, Ward couldn't put up a cross, but, you know, Shaw picked up his pieces, crossed it into Bolly, and that was an absolute spectacular, you know, inch-perfect cross, an inch-perfect goal, you know. The weight he had to put on that cross, and the weight he had to put on that, you know, header, to go to loop over the keeper and dink into the back of the net was absolutely outstanding. But in the 55th minute, you know, Ward crossed it into Russell, who beats his man for pace, but it gets wonderfully saved by Hansen and you know he kept you know Rosenborg's you know hopes alive I guess in the game if you want to put it that way um but Junior Melander tried another effort from outside the box which got saved but Eric Russell's header didn't get saved you know uh if not if it's not if it's not Eric Deer it's, it's some blonde guy you know that is Russell obviously <laughs> Russell is a midget in real life so I don't understand why he wins headers on the game but Bryson almost manages to score in the 87th minute but he goes up to collect his corner and you know crosses it into Eric Deer who manages to beat his man and power head it into the back of the net and at this point I don't know why I just came across thinking that um I, I, I have the potential to win the Europa League I personally think but if I don't I feared I'm gonna get the sack because you know they've already Derby County aren't exactly a rich team and they've gave me 13 million when you know their normal budget uh, in season one was two million so that's a big increase so I mean, you know, I, I can't, I'm kind of scared that all get the sack because I spent so much money. Um, but you know, whatever. Um, you know, I guess if I treat every game like a cup final uh, from you know now on, and I win every single game, I don't think I'll get the sack. So I'm pretty much safe, I think. Um, but you know, we go into the last game in this episode against Wolverhampton Wanderers, the team that went to up two divisions in a row, and I think that's a bit too quick for them to go up two divisions in a row because we hit them on the counter in the first couple of minutes and Russell manages to you know um, you know just about get a ball past Ikeme um, and you know he can't kick, well kick or save the ball out because of the bounce you know um, Bath I think his name is Bath was almost there but the ball bounced and it rolled into the back of the net pretty quickly uh, but then 10 minutes in Bryson doubles our lead you know for a wonderful cross from whoever that was, and a wonderful finish from Bryson. And we're showing the Wolves why the Rams are, you know, whatever, I don't know. Uh, we're just saying, we're just telling the Wolves to go back in their holes because the Rams are absolutely owning this place right now. And in the 23rd, 21st minute, Bryson puts a lovely ball into Russell who calmly finishes it into the back post and triples our lead at this point. And I was like, damn, you know, this could be an amazing, amazing high-scoring game. And, you know, obviously, Will Hughes plays for Wolves, so, you know, he was in this game, so we should tell him why, and thank, well, we should just tell him, why did you leave for a club of our capacity, and, and you know, it's, we, we quadruple our lead just before the uh, half an hour mark through, uh, Biro Biro, you know, wonderful cross from Russell, wonderful header, you know, he scores his first goal in Derby shirt, apart from uh, simulated games, but I don't count them as you know, full games, uh, so that's his first goal in Derby shirt, but then, um, you know, a couple of, like, two minutes later, um, I'm not sure who that is manages to pull one back for Wolves, but, you know, it's, there's a glimpse of a comeback, I think, through the Wolves crowd, um, you know, at least, you know, they're hoping for a, a comeback, I guess, but, you know, we can see that we're totally dominating the game, not in possession, but in shots, you know, we're making the most of our possession, unlike Wolves, you know, but again, you know, I think we've not gone up too quickly, however they have, you know, but, you know, in the 60th minute, James Henry manages to, you know, uh, pass a ball, if you like, through um, Jack Butland and, you know, get the second goal for Wolves, but then Johnny Russell manages to sweat it through to Biro Biro for his second in the game, and Derby County's fifth of the game, you know, so we're almost there, you know, we're almost at 10, I guess. You know, road to 10, I guess you could call it, you know. Um, but Wolverhampton, uh, you know, we just showed them why they really need to get relegated and start building on their team instead of, you know, going up two divisions in a row to get absolutely battered by probably what should be one of the, you know, worst teams in this thingy. But that's basically it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to give a like. And yeah, so this is Midget, and I'm going to see you guys in the next episode.